Hi, I'm Ron Bateman, the Sheriff of Anne Arundel County. Welcome to your Anne Arundel's Most Wanted program, a program where we showcase wanted criminals, highlight open cases, and look to you for tips. You, concerned citizens, that share my same goal, and that's keeping our communities safe. You'd be proud to know that your calls have allowed us to put handcuffs on thousands of criminals. So sit back, set your DVR, or grab a pen and paper, and help do your part in catching criminals. You're watching Anne Arundel's Most Wanted. Now it's my pleasure to introduce our next guest, our new county executive, Mr. Steve Hsu. Steve, welcome to the show, buddy. Thank you, Sheriff. Who'd you bring for us? I've got three customers. Devante Dominic Trusty, 22, last known address, 4109 Pasaskill Avenue, Curtis Bay, Maryland. Black male, six feet. Warrant, two counts of drug possession, drug possession of paraphernalia, escape, second degree, resisting arrest, disorderly conduct, failure to obey, and theft, as well as the following traffic charges. Driving motor vehicle on highway without required license and authorization. Driving vehicle in violation of restricted license requirement. Failure of individual driving on highway to display license to uniform police on demand, and failure to maintain legible registration plate free from covers. Mr. Trusty was stopped for traffic violations on December 29, 2014 in the Freetown area of Pasadena. Mr. Trusty doesn't have a Maryland driver's license and further investigation revealed that he had illegal pills on him. While officers were getting ready to search his vehicle, Mr. Trusty fled on foot while handcuffed. He was last seen running into the woods off Freetown Road. John Edward Allen is required to register for life as a Tier 3 sexually violent offender on the Maryland Registry based on a previous second-degree sex offense conviction. On September 24, 2014, John Allen last registered in person at the Anne Arundel County Police Department's Eastern District Station and provided the address of 8063 Catherine Avenue in Pasadena for the registry. During the months of November 2014 and December 2014, Officers coordinated the biannual registered sex offender address verification compliance detail of all registered sex offenders in Anne Arundel County. On December 2, 2014, while attempting to verify Allen's address, detectives learned that John Allen no longer resides at the Catherine Avenue residence. On December 24, 2014, John Allen was due to re-register to remain in compliance with the Maryland Sex Offender Registry Law. As of January 13, 2015, the Maryland Online Sex Offender Registry indicates that John Edward Allen last registered on September 24, 2014 and is currently registered with the address of 8063 Catherine Avenue in Pasadena. John Allen failed to re-register with the Anne Arundel County Police Department or any other jurisdiction. On January 13, 2015, he was charged with failing to register under the terms as a Tier 3 sex offender with the Anne Arundel County Police Department, the designated local law enforcement unit where the registrant habitually lives. A warrant was issued for his arrest. DeAndre Earl Franklin, 27. Last known address, 719 Snowden Lane, Glen Burnie, Maryland. Black male, 5 foot 10, 160 pounds. Warrant, armed robbery. Mr. Franklin was recently identified as a suspect in an armed robbery and assault of a citizen that occurred on August 17, 2014 at the Royal Farm Store parking lot located at 200 Oak Manor Drive in Glen Burnie. Investigation revealed the incident was a drug deal set up as a robbery. The suspects took money and pills in the incident. Detectives are actively seeking to locate Franklin. Well, we gotta get our hands on them. Folks, remember, if you know the whereabouts of any of those individuals, do not approach them. Instead, call that number on the screen, 410-222. 
1490 or 911 24 hours a day. Keep those calls coming in, folks. They're definitely paying off. Can Executive Steve Shue, welcome to the show and congratulations. Great job. Thank you. And now for another regular guest on our show, Corporal Amy Megith from the Annapolis Police Department. Welcome back to the show, Amy. Thank you, Sheriff. And happy birthday to you. Thank you very much. Who would you bring for us? I've got four people today. The first one is Eugene Daryl Martin. His nickname is Block. His date of birth is March 26th of 1982. He's a black male, six foot three inches tall, weighing 175 pounds, with black hair and brown eyes. He has a tattoo on his right arm, and his last known address is 707 Newtown Drive in Annapolis. He has two open warrants. One warrant is for possession of CDS, not marijuana, possession of CDS paraphernalia, and possession of CDS with intent to distribute PCP. Second warrant is with the Sheriff's Department and is for possession of CDS, not marijuana. The warrant with Annapolis Police Department stems from an incident on March 22nd, 2013. Officers received information from a citizen that Martin had been selling CDS from within a vehicle parked on Newtown Drive. Officers went out to the scene and saw the vehicle identified by the citizen. The vehicle was brought back to APD for a search. Officers found seven half fluid ounce bottles of PCP hidden within a child's car seat. A search warrant for Martin's residence was obtained and officers located approximately 40 more bottles that had not been filled yet. The second person we have is Brian Gerald Eagleton. His date of birth is December 22nd, 1983. He's a black male, six foot one inches tall, weighing 200 pounds. He has black hair and brown eyes. He also has tattoos on his left and right forearms. And his last known address is 716 Geesey Court in Glen Burnie. He has one open warrant for possession of CDS with intent to distribute, possession of CDS not marijuana, and trespassing on posted property. This warrant stems from an incident when an Annapolis police officer was patrolling the area of Clay Street and Pleasant Street when he observed two men standing in front of an address on Pleasant Street. No trespassing signs are posted in that area. The officer approached the men to see if they lived in the area when one of the men took off running and the other started walking away. The officer recognized the man walking away as Brian Eagleton from prior contacts. The officer started talking to Eagleton and Eagleton said he was visiting someone in the area. As they continued talking, Eagleton began to give indications that he was going to flee the scene. Eagleton took off running, dropping his cell phone. Then he dropped two plastic bags containing over 30 grams of suspected cocaine. The officer stopped pursuing Eagleton and picked up the items Eagleton dropped. Eagleton was able to flee the area, but the officer obtained this arrest warrant. The third subject is Victor Manuel Manises Ariza. His date of birth is January 11, 1976. He's a Hispanic male, five foot six inches tall, weighing 220 pounds, with black hair and brown eyes. His last known address is 185 Clay Street in Annapolis. He has two warrants for his arrest. Both are for failing to appear in court, one for driving while intoxicated, the other for driving while suspended. In the first warrant, the officer observed a Nissan drive through the stop sign at Chesapeake Avenue and Bay Ridge Avenue without stopping or slowing down. The officer followed the vehicle and stopped it. The driver was identified as Victor Manises. The officer smelled a strong odor of alcoholic beverage coming from Manises' person. Manises said he had drunk four beers. He failed to adequately perform standardized field sobriety tests and was arrested for driving while intoxicated. For the second warrant, the officer observed a Jeep traveling up Main Street, turning onto Francis Street. The vehicle parked on Francis Street. The officer noticed the vehicle had front end damage. The driver was identified as Victor Manissis and his driver's license was suspended and he was arrested. And the last subject we have is Reginald Demore King Jr. His date of birth is March 29, 1991. He's a black male, five foot nine inches tall, weighing 150 pounds with black hair and brown eyes. He has tattoos on his left shoulder and right arm. His last known address is 77 Pleasant Street in Annapolis. He has a warrant for first and second degree assault, reckless endangerment, false imprisonment, and handgun on person. In August of 2014, Annapolis police officers responded to a home for a report of a domestic assault. The female victim reported she was assaulted over a period of hours by her ex-boyfriend, Reginald King. 
She was upset crying and told police that King was going to kill her. She said she and King had an ongoing disagreement and that she had been in fear for her life for some time. On the day of the report, King began arguing with the woman, and when he pushed her down, she saw a handgun in his waistband. King then started strangling her, telling her he was going to kill her. King kept her in the home and would not let her out and later kicked her, strangled her again, punched her, and pointed the gun at her. The woman was able to escape after King was distracted by his cell phone. King was able to flee the area before the woman contacted police. Thank you very much. Folks, you know the whereabouts of any of those individuals. You know the drill. Do not approach them. Instead, call that number on the screen, 410-222-1490 or 911, 24 hours a day. Keep those calls coming in, folks. Your tips are definitely paying off. Amy, thank you very much. Thank you, Sheriff. And happy birthday again. Thank you. And everybody recognizes this guest, Detective Sergeant Jimmy DeLay from the Maryland State Police, Glenn Bernie Barrick. Welcome back to the show, Jimmy. Thank you, Sheriff. Who'd you bring for us? Today I have three for you. We have one CDS violation and two DUIs. The first one is a Wayne Wines. He's a 41-year-old white male with a birthday of May 8, 1973. He's 5 foot 8, weighs 155 pounds, brown hair, blue eyes, has a last known address of 1308 Fillmore Drive in Hanover, Maryland. On March 1st, 2013, at approximately 2.10 p.m., a trooper was operating MSP marked unit K931 in the area of Belgrove Road and Route 2. At the time, the trooper observed a silver Kia Spectra with Maryland registration traveling southbound on Belgrove Road. The front seat passenger was not wearing a seatbelt. A traffic stop was initiated and made contact with the occupants who were identified as a Kimberly Saunders and a Wayne Wines. Based on criminal indicators, the trooper utilized the CDS detection canine to conduct a free air sniff of the vehicle. Based on a positive canine alert, a search of the vehicle was conducted. During the search of the vehicle, a green and black mesh bag was located under the passenger seat where Mr. Wines was seated. A search of that bag revealed four hypodermic syringes, a silver metal spoon containing suspected heroin. Wines stated that the bag was his and all the contents were his property. He was placed under arrest for CDS possession and transported back to the Glen Burnie Barrack for processing. Wines was then transported to the District Court Commissioner's Office for initial appearance, where he was released on personal recognizance. Wines failed to appear for court on December 4, 2014, and has an open bench warrant for the CDS violation. The second subject I have today is Donald Eugene Embleton. Mr. Embleton is a white male, 61 years old, with a birthday of January 29, 1953. He's six foot one and approximately 200 pounds. We have a last known address of 8213 Red Miles Lane in Odenton, Maryland. On August 17th of 2014 at approximately 3.40 p.m., a citizen observed a green pickup truck from the ramp eastbound 695 to southbound 97 and called the barrack. That caller advised that the driver in the green pickup trucks was slumped over in the passenger area of the cab and appeared to be falling asleep. The caller stated that there was another citizen on the shoulder changing a tire and was almost struck by the green pickup truck as it drifted onto the shoulder. A trooper located the vehicle, which was stopped on Newcut Road in the area of 97. The trooper made contact with the driver, who was identified by his Texas driver's license as Donald Embleton. The trooper detected a strong odor on Embleton's person and on his breath. His speech was slurred, his eyes were bloodshot, and his movements were slow and lethargic. He seemed confused and disoriented, and there were multiple open beer cans in the passenger side floor. Embleton advised that he drank a six-pack of beer, after exiting the vehicle to perform field sobriety, he had to use the truck's bed rail to balance himself. His balance was poor and on several occasions he began laughing throughout the test. He performed poorly on those field sobriety tests and was arrested for DUI and transported to the Glen Burnie Barrack for processing. Embleton refused a breath test and was released to a friend after signing his citations. Mr. Embleton failed to appear for court on November 19, 2014 and has an active bench warrant for that DUI. The third one I have for you today is a Kenneth Lynn Clark. He's a black male, 54 years old, with a birthday of March 12, 1960. We have a last known address of 100 West Early Heights Road, Severna Park, Maryland. On July 4th of 2014 at approximately 10.45 p.m., a trooper was in the area of Solomon's Island Road and Somerville Road. The trooper observed a blue Toyota bearing Maryland registration and initiated a traffic stop for an inoperative stop lamp. After the trooper activated the emergency equipment, the vehicle made a left turn and accelerated for an estimated 200 yards before coming to a stop. 
As the trooper exited the vehicle, the driver had the vehicle in neutral and began drifting back at the trooper's vehicle. The trooper shouted, step on your brakes. The driver complied and the vehicle stopped an estimated seven inches from his push bumper. Upon close contact, the trooper detected the odor of an alcoholic beverage emanating from his person and breath. The trooper observed that his speech was slurred and his eyes were bloodshot and glassy. The operator, which was identified as Kenneth Clark, also had difficulty standing. The driver had urinated in his pants recently. The trooper noted that Clark was wearing blue jeans and the lower center part of his jeans were sold with urine. Clark admitted to consuming beer prior to driving. Clark performed poorly on field sobriety tests and was arrested for DUI. Clark was in possession of a Maryland driver's identification card only. His license was currently suspended at the time of the stop. He agreed to take a breath test, which resulted in a .10. Clark failed to appear for court on November 24th, 2014, and has an active bench warrant for the DUI and associated traffic offenses. That was an interesting story. Folks, you know the whereabouts of any of those individuals. Do not approach them. Instead, call that number on the screen, 410-222-1490 or 911, 24 hours a day. Jimmy, thanks a lot, buddy. Thank you, Sheriff. And now for those subjects wanted by the Anne Arundel County Sheriff's Office. Let's see, our first subject is Austin Arthur Gibson. Gibson is wanted for multiple counts of burglary, handgun on person, use of a handgun during a felony or violent crime, assault, theft, 1,000 to 10,000, and conspiracy to commit same. On December 1, 2014, county police officers spoke with residents at the 1200 block of Hilltop Drive in Annapolis about a burglary that had just occurred there. A 17-year-old resident was home alone and woke to the sound of someone entering through the front door at 8.30 a.m. As he exited his bedroom, he was met by three subjects at the top of the stairs. One of the subjects, Gibson, was recently at the home with the teen's brother while the two were working on a motorcycle. The young resident was thrown to the floor and ordered to stay on the ground. That is when he noticed Gibson had a black semi-automatic handgun in his waistband. Gibson kicked the teen's brother's bedroom door open. Then he and one of the unknown subjects carried bags into the brother's bedroom. When the two subjects exited, the unknown individual was holding the handgun. The subject waved the handgun around and threatened the teen that if he snitched on them, more people would return. The three suspects told the teen to stay on the floor for 30 seconds and left the house. Wow. In the end, Austin Arthur Gibson was positively identified in a photo lineup and nearly $3,000 worth of property and cash was taken during the burglary. Austin Arthur Gibson is a 18-year-old black male with the date of birth of November 1st, 1996. He's six foot one inches tall, weighs 150 pounds, and has brown hair and brown eyes. His last known address is 1404 Chesapeake Avenue in Annapolis. Now, our next subject is going to be Kenny Charles Adams. Adams is wanted for multiple counts of burglary and theft, $10,000 to $100,000. On November 23rd of 2014, county police responded to Rose's store on Ritchie Highway for a report of a theft. Upon arrival, the officer learned that the morning money pickup did not go so well. In fact, the deposit bags were missing from the store's safe. That sets a rough tone for the day. It should be no surprise that the store had security cameras throughout it. I mean, come on, that is commonplace. After being notified of the theft that the Roses district manager of the store responded and reviewed the security camera footage. Here comes the dumb criminal part. I love this. Video footage revealed that unusually early that morning, assistant manager, Kenneth Charles Adams used his key to enter the front door. He silenced the alarm and went to the cash office. I know you know what's coming next. Adams is seen on video opening the safe, removing the deposit bags, closing the safe, resetting the alarm, that was nice of him, and exiting the store. Hmm. The store has cameras. He is an assistant manager. All events were caught on camera and they were later burned to disk for evidence. Brilliant. And that is why we are looking for Kenneth Charles Adams, the manager that assisted himself to more than $12,000 worth of store currency. Unbelievable. Adams is a 48-year-old black male with a date of birth of August the 14th, 1966. He's five foot seven inches tall, weighs 190 pounds, has black hair and brown eyes. His last known address is 1703 Mead Village Circle in Severn. 
Let's see. Our next subject is Joshua Lee Thorne. Thorne is wanted for violating the terms of his probation for a previous burglary conviction. Burglary is a heavy charge. That is why we are previewing several subjects this month who are wanted for that offense. Being convicted of burglary and receiving the opportunity to be out of jail and on probation seems pretty significant. So let's talk about what he did and what he did not do to earn that new warrant. Thorne failed to report as directed. He failed to obey all laws. The traffic stop where he was charged with DWI and driving while under the influence of CDS pretty well knocked that out of the park. He failed to notify his probation agent about the new traffic charges. He failed to pay restitution in full for the previous conviction. And he failed to abstain from alcohol or illegal substances, referring to that traffic stop again. Today, we are looking for Joshua Lee Thorne, who is a 43-year-old white male with a date of birth of September the 20th, 1971. He's 5 foot 9 inches tall, weighs 205 pounds, and has brown hair and blue eyes. His last known address is 8021 High Oak Road in Glen Burnie. And let's see, our next subject. That is going to be Harry William Coons. Coons failed to appear for court on August the 11th of 2014 for his previous CDS possession, not marijuana, and presenting fraudulent ID charges. Yep, new bench warrant was issued for that. He failed to appear for court on November 25th of 2014 for his previous assault, failed to comply with a peace order, and stalking charges. Another bench warrant for that. He also failed to appear for court on December 5th, 2014 for his prior theft under 1,000, possession of CDS, not marijuana, and possession of paraphernalia charges. And another bench warrant was issued for that. But that's not the end of Coons' problems. He was on probation for previous convictions relating to his multiple fail to comply with peace order, harassment, telephone misuse, and disorderly conduct charges. Unfortunately, Coons failed to report, failed to obey all laws, failed to notify his agent of new charges. He tested positive on several occasions for opiates and admitted to using drugs those days. He failed to appear for court on three additional dates that we did not cover earlier. He failed to submit to evaluation and attend counseling, and he repeatedly contacted the victim in the peace order case after being ordered not to do so. Yep, he was on probation. That is now over. His bond has been revoked, and he has yet another warrant hanging over his head. So we are looking for Harry William Coons, who is a 32-year-old white male with the date of birth of March 19th, 1982. He's five foot seven inches tall, weighs 200 pounds, and has blonde hair and blue eyes. His last known address is 691 Willoughby Run in Pasadena, Maryland. Now our next subject, that is Stephen Michael Childress. Childress failed to appear for court on October 29, 2014 for his prior theft under 100 charge. He got a bench warrant for that. Childress failed to appear for court on November 18, 2014 for his prior unlawful use of motor vehicle and theft under $1,000 charges. Another new bench warrant was issued for that. Childress failed to appear for court on December 2nd of 2014 for his prior CDS possession, not marijuana charge. Yep, yet another bench warrant rolled out for that. He was on probation for a prior theft under $1,000 conviction. Unfortunately, he failed to report as directed failed to obey all laws and incur no serious motor violations, failed to notify his agent about new criminal or jailable traffic charges he received, illegally possessed, used, or sold any narcotic drug, controlled substance, or related paraphernalia. Remember those two other CDS charges, right? He had a narcotic drug in his possession when he was arrested on both occasions. He failed to pay all fines, costs, restitution, as ordered by the court, and failed to submit to evaluation, testing, and treatment and yet another warrant rolled out of the court for violating the terms of his probation. Today, we are looking for Stephen Michael Childress, who is a 30-year-old white male with a date of birth of December 20th of 1984. He's five foot five inches tall, weighs 130 pounds, has blonde hair and brown eyes. His last known address is 770 222nd Street in Pasadena. Now, our next subject, that is going to be Martin Joseph Chicakis. Chicago's failed to appear for court on August the 18th, 2014, for his prior driving on a revoked license and driving without required license charges. A new bench warrant was issued for that. Chicago's failed to appear for court on November 18th, 
2014 for his prior theft scheme, 1,000 to 10,000. Fraud, identity theft, 1,000 to 10,000. Credit card theft, forgery, and obtaining goods or money by forgery charges. The court issued another bench warrant for that. Chicago's failed to appear for court on December the 9th, 2014, for his prior CDS possession, not marijuana charge. He picked up another new bench warrant for that. And Chicago's also has a new arrest warrant for theft under $1,000. He was seen taking a couple of saws out of the back of his neighbor's truck. He, of course, did not have permission to remove the saws from the truck, so county police took the report for that offense. Today, we are looking for Martin Joseph Sakakis, who is a 29-year-old white male with a date of birth, August 27, 1985. He's 5 foot 5, 8 inches tall, weighs 170 pounds, has brown hair and hazel eyes. His last known address is 1075 Overcrest Drive in Crownsville. Now, here are our three most wanted deadbeats. Of course, this information is provided to us by our hard-working friends at the Anne Arundel County Office of Child Support. Our first DB is Warren N. Maynard. He is $62,520.42 in arrears for paying child support. Wow. Maynard is a 43-year-old black male with the date of birth, August 5th, 1971. He's 5 foot 10 inches tall, weighs 200 pounds, and has black hair and brown eyes. His last known address is 171 Bertina Nick Way in Annapolis. Next. We have Bobby Jo Gerhardt. She is $48,458.37 in arrears paying child support. Gerhardt is a 33-year-old white female with the date of birth of August 13, 1981. She's five foot four inches tall, weighs 130 pounds, and has brown hair and brown eyes. Her last known address is 1122 Hilltop Road in Orchard Beach. And next, it's gonna be Duane M. Hires. He is $16,551.68 in arrears paying child support. Hires is a 34-year-old black man with a date of birth of February 6, 1977. He's 5 foot 10 inches tall, weighs 205 pounds, and has black hair and brown eyes. And his last known address is 7918 Allard Court, number 13 in Glen Burnie. Now, folks, if you know the whereabouts of any of them people, you know the drill. Do not approach them. Instead, call that number on the screen, 410. 222-1490 or 911 24 hours a day. Now we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to have our county executive Steve Shue back on set and we're going to talk about his newest thing that he's put together called the Public Safety Core Group. So stay tuned. Dad, when will you stop smoking? Mom, will you please stop smoking? Welcome back from the break. I have with me our new county executive, Steve Shue, who we just had uh, on our show, um, reading off the Anne Arundel County's Most Wanted People. It was good to hear you do that. It was a good job on that. Thank you. Now, you and I, before we talk about the Public Safety Corps group, you and I just left a uh, press conference that you put together. Why don't you tell the audience about that? Well, as you know, Heroin is probably the biggest public safety and public health challenge we face in Anne Arundel County community. There were over 300 heroin overdoses last year and nearly a death a week, a fatality a week from heroin. This is a serious issue and we have to take serious action to combat it. Now, the problem with heroin is it is the octopus from hell. Its tentacles reach into every aspect of our lives and every aspect of county government. It's not just a law enforcement issue. It's a health issue. It's an education issue. It's a social services issue. It's a judicial issue. There are so many aspects to it. So we pulled together a task force to develop new strategies and new plans to combat this challenge head on. And that task force consists of the uh, police department, the fire department, the Department of Social Services, the health department, the city of Annapolis, including their police and fire departments, uh, the state's attorney's office, and I'm delighted to have the office of the sheriff of Anne Arundel County on there. I appreciate your participation on that task force. Absolutely. And, you know, when I was standing there today, it, it, it reminded me, the words that came to my mind were the dream team. 
I mean, it was. This, you put together a dream team of the, the, the heads of all these agencies that will all have an impact on this problem. And like one of the things I said, we have to attack it at multiple angles, and that's exactly what you've done. And, uh, and I meant what I said in my 35 years in law enforcement, I've never seen a county executive take a problem and put all the resources into it and get everyone assembled to tackle a problem. So good job on that. Well, thank you. We have a great team, and it's going to take, it's going to take everything we've got to win this yeah. battle. And that was sad hearing those two moms talk about their children. Broke the one, my heart. The one who had lost her, her, her uh, child and uh, her son and the other one who, whose, whose daughter is just out on the limb right now. And so. let's say a prayer for that daughter that she comes back and flies straight. Now, what we want to talk about next is the Public Safety Corps group that you put together. Let's talk about your vision, why you did that, and what do you hope to accomplish out of it? Well, as a, as a delegate and as a lifelong citizen of the county, it was my experience that that county government was uh, far too often inefficient, slow in providing services, too costly to deal with, and sometimes not courteous and customer friendly in the way it delivered services to our citizens. And so upon swearing in, uh, I implemented the beginnings of a significant reform process that will result in a complete reorganization of county government to achieve exactly that, more efficient, cost-effective, and customer-friendly service for our citizens. And a big part of that is organizing all 34 major departments and offices into core groups. And the concept is that by being part of a core group, departments that have things in common, that rely on uh, common systems, that serve similar customers or provide related services, can interact on a more regular basis to identify cost savings, efficiencies, and to promote better outcomes for our citizens. Now for, the interaction being how frequent? Uh, they meet monthly and with and between meetings talk on a very regular right. basis uh, through email and telephone. But for example, in our land use departments, we have inspections and permits, planning and zoning, central services, recs and parks. Those groups all need to work together to deliver quality services to the public and very much that's the case with public safety. And in public safety, we've created a core group from police, fire, the state's attorney's office, the Department of Corrections, and last but not least, the office of the Sheriff of Anne Arundel County. And again, I appreciate your being part of that. And what we plan on doing, so the audience knows, is, is for the next months to follow. So we'll have, uh, next month, we'll have the, the new chief, uh, Tim Altamari, great guy. We'll have him uh, on set talking about what he's doing uh, new as a chief, what his vision is. And then after that, um, we're going to have Terry Kokolis from the uh, Detention Center in. We're going to have Wes Adams, our new state's attorney, in, talking about his prosecution you know, efforts. Um, we'll have uh, uh, the new fire chief in. Um, so we'll have everybody on, and we'll, we'll show the audience uh, firsthand exactly what their vision is and what they hope to accomplish. So uh, it's That's a great, great idea, and, uh, and I, I just think it's a great, a great way to get everyone um, in the same room at all times. You know, I've always had communication with uh, Terry Kokolis and the chief, but it, it just helps having the state's attorney there and, and just the communication will, will, uh, will be greatly enhanced. It's amazing what happens when you get the right people in a room. Yep, absolutely. And with something as big and sprawling as county government with 34 different departments and major offices, it's very easy, it's very easy for a department or office to become sort of siloed and kind of go off independently, even though they could complete their mission if they coordinated more closely with other departments that are in the same space. And having all of our public safety departments and offices meeting together on a regular base basis promotes communication and the kinds of efficiencies and service improvements we're looking for. And the right hand always knows what the left's doing. That's it. Great. Great idea. Thanks for being on thank the you, show. Chef. I really appreciate that. Folks, I want to thank a few people who allowed the show to happen every single month. First, our county executive, Mr. Steve Shu. Also, I want to thank Dale Boyer, who's behind the camera at all times, doing a great job editing and putting the show together. The director of this operation is Lieutenant Jennifer Gilbert Duran from my office, who does an outstanding job. I also want to thank the Chiefs of Police, Tim Altamari from Anne Arundel County Police, the Annapolis Chief of Police, Mike Pristoop, and the Acting Superintendent of the Maryland State Police, Anthony Satchel. Remember, folks, I'm Sheriff Ron Bateman. Let's keep Anne Arundel County safe. We'll see you next time on Anne Arundel's Most Wanted.